Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast presented by Line Star. All things fantasy football with a sprinkle of sports betting alongside Tyler Weeman. I'm Shannon Somerville. It is super wild card weekend and we've got your daily fantasy picks for the Sunday slate. We've also got your touchdown calls as well. Tyler, I know this morning I said that you look like Billy Costigan from The Departed. Now that I'm giving it a second look here, maybe it's giving more of a high stakes poker game. We need to get you back out shades or something. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I went from Leo. Leonardo down, DiCaprio's. Down yeah. to poker player. All right. <laughs> so Man. we are, we're getting set. Uh, you know, we're talking it's wild cards. Day. So it, it goes into the theme here. We're going to be talking about your best DFS plays for the Sunday slate. We've got three games going on. We've got some pretty good games in this one. Mm-hmm. We've got the Miami Dolphins at Buffalo. Then we've got Giants at Vikings. Excited for that one. And then we've got Baltimore at Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. No Lamar Jackson in that one, but should yeah. be a good game nonetheless. And AFC Baltimore North rivalry. Stay. Yeah, exactly. they can stay competitive. So let's get to it. We'll break it down by position. Let's start off with the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. Tyler, we've got a... A lot of great quarterbacks to choose from. I know I mentioned we are without Tua and without Lamar Jackson in this one. Where are you looking to find some value in daily fantasy at the quarterback position? Well, Josh Allen is likely the highest owned quarterback uh, on Sunday for good reason. Mm -hmm. Highest team total. Best matchup as far as our line star matchup tool. And he's averaging 30.5 DraftKings points versus Miami, versus Miami over his last 10 games versus them. So he's done really well against them, and he probably should once again this week. Yeah, he had over 300 yards in each of the two games, and Miami ranks 25th in fast defense DVOA. So it's looking like a smash game for Josh mm-hmm. Allen. This one is at home in front of the hometown crowd at Orchard Park where his passing numbers are a lot better Anyways, it's going to be going nuts Yes, in Buffalo, New York. A lot of tables broken. Who else are you looking at at quarterback? Uh, And then I think we got to look at Daniel Jones. He's the only other guy that really has a similar ceiling. Maybe not quite as high as Josh Allen, but Mm -hmm. it is up there. Kirk Cousins would have to throw, you know, four touchdowns and 400 yards that make it happen. But so I think you got to look at Daniel Jones. Uh, week 16 versus Minnesota, he went for 330 total yards and a touchdown. Minnesota ranks 31st, allowing 283 pass yards a game. So I think he's in a really good spot. You add uh, Minnesota being bad at protecting the pass mm-hmm. and then also the upside of Daniel Jones' rushing, and I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, the Giants looking at this game, they're going to have to get Daniel Jones moving around, scrambling a bit mm-hmm. in order to win this game. The Minnesota Vikings have struggled uh, defensively, 27th in defensive DVOA. So yeah. a nice spot there for Daniel Jones if he can capitalize. And you got to like the coaching of Brian Dable and that crew for the Giants figuring out a way to uh, win some games. I don't know week. how they keep doing it, but they just kept winning all season long. Exactly. And you know what could help? Saquon is also in a good spot as well. Mm -hmm. And if he has a good game, that could open things up for Daniel Jones as well. Talking about the running back position, he is your pick for daily fantasy. He is. So, I I mean, his involvement in the passing game gives him such a high floor. This is the highest game total on the slate. So it's the best game environment as, as well. And frankly, if this team wants to win, he's got to be able to to produce here. It's not going to be on the back of Daniel Jones, although Jones can absolutely Mm -hmm. help them there. But even in that game where Daniel Jones had a really good game, Saquon 133 yards and a touchdown uh, in week 16, and Minnesota allows 44% more fantasy points to the running back when they're at home. Yeah, Barkley had 133 total yards against Minnesota back mm-hmm. in week 16. He's averaging over 100 total yards per game. He's been awesome. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing the quad father in the postseason because I know he's going to be extra juiced up for this one. His first postseason game. Yep. All right. Good spot. Uh, anyone else we're looking at for running back? I think... He's my favorite out of the higher-end guys. The low-end guys, there's a lot of different guys I like. Jeff Wilson with Raheem Mostert looks really good. J.K. Dobbins is going to go pretty low-owned, but he's in a decent spot where he could put up some points. And then I think you can go to James Cook, who is sharing the backfield with Devin Singletary. 
At wide receiver, we've got a lot to choose from here. Three of the top five wide receivers in the NFL in receiving yards are at play on Sunday, including Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, and Stephon Diggs in this one. So where are you headed for a daily fantasy pick? I, I do like Justin Jefferson. I think the game really comes down to him. If he is able to have a big game, which he should, I think they can win without him having a big game. I don't see the Vikings winning this game. Mm -hmm. In week 16, he went 12 receptions for 133 yards and a touchdown. Giants ranked 24th, allowing 167 yards to the wide receiver. So I think he's in a really good spot to do it again. Yeah, all the offense for the Vikings basically mm -hmm. runs through Justin Jefferson. If he doesn't have a good game, the Vikings as a whole aren't yeah, having a good exactly. game either. Who else are you looking at for wide receiver? I think you got to look at Jamar Chase. He's averaging 23.55 DraftKings fantasy points per game versus Baltimore this season, and then almost 20 over the last two seasons versus them. He's averaging 13 targets over the last four, and Baltimore hasn't been that great versus the wide receiver. They rank 31st uh fantasy points allowed the wide receiver. Yeah, Chase had 86 yards in the most recent game. He had a mm -hmm. touchdown in that game. Yes, like you mentioned, the Baltimore Ravens defense has improved, but they are still prone to giving up those big plays. Even when they cover him so yeah. tightly, he just has a way of just making them look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but like his buddy Justin Jefferson, he's yeah. just extremely good and he's going to get open. All right. So some sleeper plays here. Where are you looking? Uh, yeah, I like the Giants wide receivers, especially Richie James and Isaiah Hodgins. James or Hodgins a little bit higher priced and he hasn't got quite the same amount of mm -hmm. targets as James, but they've been really good over the last four weeks. James is averaging 16 fantasy points per game and he's at near minimum price. So I think you got to look at there. Hodgins is just going to be a little bit uh, lower owned, but mm -hmm. some more upside. So he's in a great spot in Minnesota ranks 32nd yeah. versus wide receiver. Hodgins, f uh, f a touchdown in four of the last five games played, yeah. so could find some value there. And Richie James averaging 67 receiving yards over the last four games. He had mm -hmm. 90 against Minnesota back in week 16. So that's going to be a game where we're going to see a lot of offense. Yeah. It's indoors, and both teams don't like to play defense. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a high-scoring affair in that one. Yeah, and another thing to kind of consider with these smaller slates is that you can stack a little bit more. Uh, so, I mean, you could go Jones, Barkley, Hodgins, and James all in the same lineup. And we got to get the G-men in there. Yeah. How about tight end? Where are you looking for the best value at tight end on Sunday? Uh, well, I think you got to bring up TJ Hawkinson. Obviously, as the highest upside on the slate, he's averaging 9.5 targets a game over his last four in it's in the best game environment so yeah tj hawkins and averaging 52 receiving yards per game with minnesota mm -hmm. 109 receiving yards and two touchdowns against the giants back in week 16 he had an absolute smash of a game back then yep. so could have yeah. a, do you see a repeat performance or at least just a good fantasy outlook i think he's gonna do well i don't know if he's gonna repeat yeah the giants 31st in pass defense dvoa yeah. where else are you looking for some value at tight end uh, good old dawson knox i i think he's in a good spot miami just hasn't been that good at stopping uh tight end touchdowns they're allowing 0.8 reception uh receiving tight ends to the touch receiving touchdowns to the tight end it's over a lot the last of tees. Nine. a lot of tees there. i know a little tongue twister <laughs> there but with that comes about 51 yards a game so i think he's in a good spot all right last up defenses mm -hmm. the best defense on sunday statistically is the bills yes are they one you're willing to pay up for i uh, yeah, they're not that expensive, so I'm absolutely willing to go to the Bills with Skylar Thompson under uh, quarterback mm -hmm. for Miami. So I think they're going to be the most popular, but it's for good reason. And um, what's another defense that's maybe a little bit more under the radar I in this one? I think you can pick on uh, another backup quarterback, and you can go with the Bengals you go. versus the Ravens. Yeah, 11th in DVOA, and Lou Anarumo for the Bengals has just been incredible. Uh, coordinating coordinating that yeah. defense and making second half adjustments. They've just been really outstanding. I know the offense for the Bengals gets a lot of the attention, rightfully so, with yeah. all the playmakers they have, but the defense has really been holding up their end of the bargain. Defense has been very solid. 
The other uh, thing in this one is the Bengals defense. Their trademark is takeaways, which mm-hmm. is big for fantasy. Yep. They forced nine turnovers in four playoff games last year. And this game, no Lamar Jackson in this one, mm-hmm. as you mentioned. And so it could be a great spot for the Bengals defense. So some great plays there for Daily Fantasy on Sunday's slate for more analytics, statistics, and everything you need to dominate those Daily Fantasy contests. Make sure to check out LineStarApp.com. Now let's get into our touchdown calls of the Sunday slate. Tyler, where are you headed for an anytime touchdown for Sunday's wildcard games? I'm going with uh, Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson. No one can stop him on the Giants. He went for 12 receptions for 133 yards and a touchdown in week 16. I think he's set up for another good week. I'm going Bills tight end Dawson Knox plus 210. It's cold weather up in Buffalo. That means it's Dawson Knox season. He's had a touchdown in each of the last four games. He's got that strength, size, great hands. And Miami ranks 30th in pass defense DVOA versus the opposing team's tight end. Furthermore, they rank 23rd in opponent red zone scoring percentage. Give me Dawson Knox for an anytime touchdown. I think he takes one. I like it. And that helps you out in Daily Fantasy. That was one of your guys there. Yeah, sure is. So we've got a super wild card slate. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited yeah. for all these games. Uh, yeah. It's it's a good one for sure. I'm excited. I think the game I'm most excited actually is the Giants-Vikings because they're the two most unpredictable teams that we've seen this season. You know, one week yeah. the Vikings are getting 40 hung up on them by the Cowboys. The next, you know, they're surprising us with these. Yeah, these and as you said the other biggest day. Com- biggest comeback in NFL history, yeah, right? As you said the other day, it's two of the luckiest teams in the yeah. NFL too. So we'll see how the ball bounces on Sunday. So a lot of great games. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and make sure to check out linestarapp.com for everything you need to dominate in fantasy. And if you're watching us on YouTube and you're enjoying our content, do us a favor, like this video, subscribe to our channel and comment below. Let us know what you think of the show, what you think of our picks. And if you have any other great plays, drop them below for everyone in the comments to check out and Let's go crush these contests this weekend. Good luck to you. And make sure to also check out our props videos. We've got the best prop bets on prize picks and underdog fantasy. So check those out as well. Good luck to you in Super Wild Card Week. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.